You know, war itself is a crime. War itself is a crime. We, we shouldn't be talking about war crimes. War is a crime. And the biggest crime is the war on the poor. 2.7 billion people can't eat today. And that's considered something invisible. Where is the outrage in the world when children struggle to eat? 97% of the population of Afghanistan is living in poverty. And there's no urgent Security Council meeting about that. The children who die in Afghanistan are irrelevant. Today, the Chancellor of Germany, the President of Ukraine and others have talked about how horrible it is that this war is taking place in Europe, as if that itself should qualify anything. As if because it's happening in Europe, it's more important than the war in Syria or the war against the Palestinians or the war in Yemen. Somehow, because this is in Europe, old racism rears its head. And this war, these bodies somehow become much more important to focus upon than the bodies of those children who die around the world because they can't eat. Or the bodies of the Yemenis who continue to be punctually bombed, not just by the Saudis, but by British and US arms manufacturers, BAE Systems, Lockheed, and others. War is a crime. Yes. Rosa Luxemburg put it beautifully. She said, in peacetime, workers of the world unite. In wartime, workers of each country slit each other's throats. War is never good for the poor. War is never good for workers. War itself is a crime. War is a crime. War produces crimes. Look, we know what was done to Afghanistan was an abomination. There was no good war, Afghanistan, bad war, Iraq. The Afghanistan war was a terrible war. The United States had ample opportunity to negotiate with the Taliban to get bin Laden and others and start a reasonable judicial inquiry about what happened. They didn't bother. They went and started bombing immediately because they don't care about the Afghan people at all. They don't care about the Afghan people. They don't care about any of the people they brought to Guantanamo. As Mamadou said quite correctly, quite correctly, they can be sanctimonious about what's happening elsewhere in China and so on, but they don't recognize the same principles against themselves. Yes, Guantanamo, 20 years, but what about Abu Ghraib? Have we forgotten so quickly? What about all the other black sites, including in some of these Eastern European countries that are now barking about human rights? Let's ask the Polish government, how many black sites did you have there? How many CIA planes flew through Ireland to Eastern Europe, bringing people to be tortured? Where are they? Where are their stories? Irrelevant in our imagination today. War produces crimes. It's not only itself a crime, it produces crimes. War also produces lies, denials. United States government lied from the first day about everything it was doing in Afghanistan and subsequently in Iraq. They lied about what they were doing. They lied about what happened in 2007 in New Baghdad city when Saeed and Nur al-Din were killed by those Apache helicopters. They lied. They were asked directly. David Finkel of the Washington Post said in his book, he said that there's a video. And the US government lied and said there's no video. It is thanks to Chelsea Manning, the bravery of Chelsea Manning, the honor of Chelsea Manning, that Chelsea Manning downloaded that video, downloaded the material from the State Department, delivered that material to the WikiLeaks organization. It is thanks to Julian Assange and the WikiLeaks organization that we as journalists were able to write about it, that we were able to see the collateral murder video about the cold-blooded murder of Saeed, Noor al-Din and others in New Baghdad city in 2007. It's thanks to them that we were able to finally not sound crazy and be able to tell our editors that this is exactly what we are seeing on the ground. Because for years, editors said, you can't confirm these things. Well, now we could. 
Now we could, and thanks to the State Department cables, we could confirm even more, not just from Iraq, not just from Afghanistan, but also about the black sites, all confirmed. We could confirm what was happening in the prisons of Egypt, where again prisoners were sent to be tortured, so-called curveball, the reason that the United States decided they could have an excuse to go to war, and an illegal war against the Iraqi people. War produces lies. It's thanks to WikiLeaks, it's thanks to Julian Assange that we were able to break the barrier, break the lies, and show what was actually happening. War is a crime, my friends. War itself is a crime. Of course, Guantanamo must be shut down. Who in their right mind can make an argument to continue Guantanamo, keep the 39 people? As Nancy said, most of them already cleared for release. Of course, shut down Guantanamo. That's hardly a controversial statement. Of course, free Julian Assange. How is that controversial? What did Julian Assange do that the New York Times didn't do? What did Julian Assange do that the Guardian newspaper, and to the shame of the New York Times, to the shame of the Guardian, to the shame of the Spiegel, none of them stand with the man who provided them the information that came to him from Chelsea Manning. He is going to be charged on that espionage act. He should be walking into this room right now to stand here, join us, and tell us about the mechanism WikiLeaks created so that people could come in, provide information anonymously, so that we as journalists could read that information, evaluate whether it's real, and publish it. It was the New York Times that published the material that Chelsea Manning provided to the WikiLeaks organization. Where is the New York Times today? Why isn't it in, in this room? Why don't they cover the Belna Belmarsh Tribunal? They will not. Obviously, shut down Guantanamo. Obviously, free Julian Assange. Today, my friends, the whistleblowers are in prison. The war criminals win awards. The whistleblowers are in prison and the war criminals win awards. War is a crime. It's up to us to stop this abomination from continuing.